China. Some investors are concerned that China may stop buying or even sell its U.S. Treasury debt as this trade dispute continues with America. Peter Morisi is with us. Is that likely? I mean, would they really pull that lever, pull that trigger and start selling Treasury securities? Well, it would cost them money and we could offset it. Essentially, they would be swapping pictures of George Washington that pay interest by selling them for dollars, which don't pay interest. Now, that would reduce the supply of dollars in the world that were in circulation, but increase the supply of bonds. The Fed could simply offset that by, by purchasing those bonds, much as it did during the Obama years with quantitative easing. It was essentially monetizing that portion of the debt. So this is not a real threat that has any teeth. Uh, my feeling is the only problem we have is getting Jerome Powell to support the president, much as the way Chinese monetary authorities, as I speak, are supporting President Xi. You know, they're trying to provide support for markets because people are panicking needlessly over these tariffs. So you, you would think you want to see a Federal Reserve interest rate cut as we go further into this China trade dispute. That's what you're I, looking for. I would prefer to see them ease, get off of, 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 of letting the, the balance sheet run off. Uh, before September. I would prefer they did it that way. I don't know that I want to cut in interest rates just yet, but I would like to see them ease back on selling off the balance sheet. As an economist, what do you make of the president's plan to take money from tariffs, a lot of billions of dollars from tariffs on Chinese products, and give that money indirectly to the farmers to buy them off in a way to keep them on the president's side? Now, that's well, the plan. You think it would work? Well, I think it's going to be difficult. To, first of all, conceptually, it's a sound plan. I mean, basically, we've had a change in the trade environment induced by government policy. The losers should be compensated, just like adjustment assistance for workers when we lower tariffs. The real problem is implementing it, getting the money to the right and deserving people. Longer term, I think we need to reconcile that these tariffs are likely to be permanent, okay. that we're not going to make a deal, and so we have to help the farmers develop new markets. That should be part of the plan. At this point, I don't see anybody breaking away from the president, no significant politician breaking away and saying, end this dispute, forget these tariffs, let's get on with business. I don't see anybody saying that. In other words, I think at this moment, political unity has been preserved. Am I the right? The important thing here to recognize is that China is refusing to do what every other civilized nation does. When we enter into a trade agreements, for example, with Mexico or Canada and the WTO, and the WTO even explicitly requires this of anybody who signs on, including China, is that they change their domestic legislation to be consistent with the requirements of the agreement. That's why we're sitting here with the Chinese now negotiating, because they didn't keep their promises when they joined the WTO. Now them saying, oh, this is a point of honor and sovereignty. What, what President Xi is basically saying is what we've known all along. He views China as above the rest of us and he above all other leaders as able to basically dictate terms. We need to stand firm on this. China is behaving like an international runagate nation. Okay, looks like it's going on for some time to come. Yes. Peter Marisi, thanks for joining us. Always appreciate it, sir. Thank you.